what are the expectations? What are realistic expectations in year three, excuse me, year two of Lamont Parrish? You look at last season, year one, which I, I really label guys almost as a year zero, but 11 and 21, four and 14 in the conference. Guys, the Gamecocks ranked number 221 in the Ken Palm rankings, which is like the, 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 the big deal rankings in college basketball. Uh, simply put, guys, it was a disaster, right? I mean, it, it was nobody wanted to talk about basketball. Nobody wanted to mention men's basketball. It was just sort of an eyesore. It was just kind of that thing where like, oh, yeah, well, they're there. You know what I mean? They're there. Um, and, and so you look at the second year Lamont Paris. Who did you lose, right? You're going to have to replace guys. Of course, the big one is G.G. Jackson. You lost Hayden Brown, Chico Carter Jr. You lost some of the bench guys like Daniel Hankins, Sanford Ford Cooper Jr., Javon Benson, Trayvon Minot. But the big one's obviously G.G., Hayden Brown, and Chico Carter, which I think the Chico Carter lost. That was the departure that was that was really surprising. Uh, but you did add a lot of pieces, guys. You added a lot of pieces. You know, you return a lot of experience. South Carolina quadrupled their returning starting experience or just their starting experience as a whole. Michi Johnson returns. That was the big boost over the offseason. Jacoby Wright is back. Josh Gray is back for his 17th year in a Gamecock uniform. Zachary Davis, Benjamin Bozeman's Verdonk, Eli Sparkman, Abrima Dribba, who we did not get to see last year. He was the transfer from Coastal, right, who had the injury. Uh, but the big leader, of course, guys, is Michi Johnson, right? He played in 30 of 32 games last year. Um, South Carolina was 10 and 20 in the games he played in. He was very, very good. He's the leader, and I think he's going to have a big, big impact on this basketball team yet again this season. And then who did you add, guys? It's unfortunate that Colin Murray Boyles is not going to be able to go. This was a four-star kid, guys. He is dealing with mono. So I don't know if that's going to keep him out the whole season, if it's going to be how long it's going to be, but uh, he is out for the foreseeable future. You also add freshman Arden Conyers, the three-star, 6'7", 204, Morris Ugrusuk, uh, 6'4", 190. And then a couple of transfers, guys. The transfer portal for South Carolina was huge yet again. Talon Cooper, the 6'4", 200-pound transfer from Minnesota, who I see in the starting lineup for South Carolina. Miles Stute, the transfer from Vandy, who I think also is in your starting lineup. Stephen Clark, the transfer from the Citadel. And then B.J. Mack was the one I think most folks, a lot of folks got really excited about over the offseason. The Wofford transfer, standing at six foot eight, 270 pounds. And again, guys, I do see him being a starter as well. So, guys, I'm projecting three of the five in South Carolina's starting lineup are going to be transfers, which, again, just goes to show you how big of an impact these transfer portal players have. Again, guys, at the point, I've got Taylon Cooper at shooting guard. I got Michi Johnson uh, at strong forward. I got Miles Stoop, power forward, BJ Mack, and the center, Josh Gray. We'll see if Josh Gray actually does get the nod for South Carolina. Now, when you look at the schedule, guys, I think the non conference is actually pretty manageable, right? You've got games against teams like USC Upstate, DePaul, George Washington, East Carolina, Charleston Southern, Winthrop, right? Your smaller in-state games. The standout non-conference games come against teams like Virginia Tech. You're, you're playing in a lot more uh, tournaments, right, than I ever recall South Carolina playing in. They're playing in a number of tournaments this year, just going through the schedule here. South Carolina is taking on Virginia Tech in the Hall of Fame series, which is going to be in Charlotte. They're playing in the AZ tip-off, the Arizona tip-off, I believe, which is going to be – they're taking on DePaul in Phoenix, Arizona. And then we'll play either Grand Canyon or San Francisco in Phoenix as well. Gamecocks are playing in the ACC-SEC Challenge when they take on Notre Dame. That's a really notable uh, game there as well. Of course, you got the game against Clemson on a Wednesday this year, which is interesting, Wednesday, December the 6th. That is an 8 o'clock tip-off in Clemson on the ACC Network. And uh, outside of that, guys, I mean, those are your notable games. But I think you got a good chance to, at minimum, I think a 9-4 and four non-conference campaign, maybe 10-3. and three. Hey, maybe you go 11-2. and two. But it doesn't feel like it, it has the, the traps or the pitfalls that maybe some of the schedules of years past have had. But again, this is South Carolina. So, uh, 
you know, it's almost, it's almost like expect a non-conference loss that you don't ex- see coming. It, it just it feels like every single year there's some conference loss. There, or excuse me, there's some non-conference loss or some upset in the non-con that uh, South Carolina suffers. You didn't look at the conference scheduling, guys. The SEC scheduling folks they did they did South Carolina no favors because it's more than likely you're going to start zero three, right? You got Mississippi State. Granted, it's on your home floor, but Mississippi State, one of the best teams in the SEC. Then you got to go to Alabama, to Missouri before you finally get relief in a home game against Georgia. You got games against, I'll just go through the whole schedule, at Arkansas, Kentucky at home, Mizzou at home, at Tennessee, at Georgia, uh, Ole Miss at home, Vandy at home, at Auburn, LSU at home, Ole Miss away, Texas A&M away, Florida at home, Tennessee at home, and then Mississippi State on the road to close out the season. So, we go back to the question. What are realistic expectations for Lamont Paris in year two? I think if South Carolina, guys, like you have to keep in perspective how bad last year was, right? You have to keep in perspective how terrible they were. And so, it's not going to happen overnight, right? I mean, everybody's picking South Carolina 14th out of 14 teams in the SEC. Everyone is picking South Carolina at the bottom. So you have to be realistic with your expectations. 11-21 and last year, 4-14 and in conference. With that being said, I do think South Carolina can hover around that 500 mark. And I think if they do that, guys, I think if they do that, I think that's a success. I think if we are in February and we're having conversations about South Carolina, they could be on the bubble for the NIT, if we're having those types of conversations, I genuinely think that is a step forward in the right direction. Because if you're Lamont Paris, you got to continue to build this thing through the transfer portal. You got to continue to build this thing in recruiting. And it's just simply put, guys, it's not going to happen overnight at a place like South Carolina, where you're just shuffling in five star freshmen replacing guys year to year. Like you have to develop guys, you have to scout guys out. You've got to find diamonds in the rough in recruiting. Feels a lot like football in that sense. I look at this team, though. I look at the starting five. Cooper, Johnson, Stute, Matt, Gray. That's most likely your starting five. And you lose G.G. Jackson. And some people are going to say, how can you improve when you lose a guy like that? Guys, I think you are improved. I think your roster is better. Although you lost G.G. And it's all due respect to G.G. But his best basketball is ahead of him. It's not behind him at South Carolina. That's not to say he was a bad player, right? We saw him flash. We saw him do some big things. But it almost felt like at times, the G.G. Jackson thing, it was almost like it was a distraction in a sense, from the sense of the season was about G.G. Jackson. The season wasn't about the South Carolina basketball team putting together together a competent product and making a run at anything significant. So I just think, I think not having that distraction, I think not having to worry about the, how do you balance the playing time for the freshman? How to, like, it just felt like every game, it was all about Gigi. It was all about getting Gigi going. I think not having to do that, not having to worry about that. I think South Carolina is going to be better off for it. I think the Gamecocks are going to be improved. I'm not saying they're going to be world beaters by any stretch. I don't think they will finish last. And while South Carolina was laughably bad last year, you're going to scoff at this, but I think the Gamecocks take a step forward. They'll be respectfully bad this year. They're not going to be great. Carolina's not going to be great. They don't have quality depth. You know, you question even some of the transfers. Guys, they have one transfer that came from a school that was top 100 in the Kim Pomp rankings. I don't know if y'all knew that, but... You know, it, it's we'll see how these guys pan out. But I do think, I do think South Carolina men's basketball under Lamont Paris in year two will take a step forward. If you can be in the conversation for the NIT, if you can be floating around 500 come February or March, that is a fantastic year, I think, in year two. I think South Carolina's roster, even without Gigi Jackson, is actually improved. And I think not having as many distractions as they had last year. I think they'll be better for it, guys. And I've got South Carolina, again, not going to be world beaters, 
I've got them at 14 and 17 overall and 5 and 13 in the conference. So not a huge step forward. It's not, and I'm admittedly going a little bit conservative with these picks because I tend to give South Carolina too much credit across the board. But I think the Gamecocks, I just think the product is going to be better. I, I think overall the product is going to be better. And South Carolina fans have got to have patience when it comes to this basketball team and this basketball program. Year two of the Lamont Paris era, what do you expect and what would be success as the Gamecocks basketball program continues to be built?